Hello, and welcome to St. Evan Campion's new video series, Me and My Favourite Saint. Throughout these videos, myself, and hopefully some of our students here within school, will be talking to you about our favourite saints. Hopefully, you'll find out many fascinating facts about these various holy men and women who have inspired us throughout our lives. And maybe you may learn an interesting thing or two about myself and my fellow Campionites. So, I'll go first. My favourite saint, well, it was difficult to select just one. Um, however, I think the saint who has inspired me the most and the saint who I pray to most often is Saint Paul. Saint Paul is my confirmation saint, so at the age of 11, when I was preparing for the sacrament of confirmation, I researched the lives of a multitude of holy men and women, and it was Saint Paul's story which struck me the most. But why? Well, I think it's because his life teaches us that it is never too late to change. Saul, Saint Paul, as I'm sure you are well aware, wasn't always the nicest of people. He began life as a Jewish Pharisee, and he believed in strict observance of the Jewish law. So, when Christianity came into existence after Pentecost, Saul was not too pleased. He was very perturbed that increasingly more and more Jewish men and women were turning away from Jewish law and instead listening to the word of this man named Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. Saul was in fact indirectly responsible for the death of many early Christians. We know he was present at the execution of the first Christian martyr, Stephen. And it was on the way to Damascus to persecute even more Christians that Saul encountered something miraculous. A blindingly bright light appeared in the sky, knocking Saul off his horse, and a voice, a mysterious voice called out to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It was, of course, the voice of our Lord Jesus Christ. After this, Saul changed his ways. He no longer persecuted Christians, but in fact became Christian. And not only that, he became the greatest missionary ever. He travelled all throughout Jerusalem and beyond, all throughout the world, spreading the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. He also wrote countless letters, and those letters are still with us today in the Bible, in the New Testament. It was one of these letters, his letter to the Corinthians, that was read at my wedding to Mrs. Sorrell, and I'm going to share it with you now. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in that letter, St. Paul gives us a list of the virtues of love. He tells us what it means to truly, deeply love someone, as I love my wife. Do I make mistakes? Of course I do. We all make mistakes. We are human, and therefore we are tempted to sin. Will I continue to make mistakes? I would like to say no, but the honest answer is of course I will. We will, and we do, reject God. We turn away from God. But God, God who is all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-loving, never rejects us. He knows us. He knows that we are going to commit sin. He knows that we are going to do vile, awful things to each other and to him. But regardless of that, he perseveres. 
he is not easily angered. He always hopes, he always rejoices. St. Paul's life teaches us that it is never too late to turn back to God, to be reconciled with him. Even when we think we have gone too far, even when we think we have overstepped the line. For Saul, that was persecuting Christians. For us, it might mean something different. But no matter what we think, God will always accept us. God will always want us to come back to him. That is why St. Paul is my favorite saint. And that is why if you come into the chapel and look at my desk, you will see a statue of St. Paul sitting there, reminding me of that message, reminding me, it's okay, Mr. Sorrell. Don't worry, yes, you've made a mistake. Yes, you need to repent for that mistake. Say sorry, say sorry to your wife. But it is never too late to make amends and to do some good in this world. Thank you so much for listening to me, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I also hope you'll join us again next week and the following weeks for our next series of videos. Until then, take care, God bless, and I hope to see you soon.